Welcome to your Covidence update for October 2022. Uh, my name's Adrian Martineau, I'm the Chief Investigator based at Queen Mary University of London and today I'm joined by Julia Vivaldi who's our lead statistician and is going to tell you about some of our latest findings. So in today's webinar uh, I want to uh, present to you some of the latest work we've done looking at risk factors for persistent breathlessness uh, in people who've had COVID-19. And the reason we're focusing particularly on breathlessness is that we appreciate long COVID or prolonged symptoms of uh, following an episode of COVID can occur in multiple body systems. But we want to really focus on the respiratory system in particular, partly because we have a standardised question that we ask every month, and partly because this is really one of the very commonest symptoms of long COVID along with fatigue. So you can see here um, this systematic review of studies on long COVID indicated that shortness of breath or dyspnea, as we call it in medical parlance, um, occurred in around about 36% of people who uh, experienced prolonged symptoms after COVID-19. And the way that we capture breathlessness, as you will know, having completed this questionnaire some tens of times by now, is with the uh, five level question no, known as the MRC dyspnea questionnaire or breathlessness questionnaire, um, which is illustrated here. So the lowest grade of breathlessness is one when you're only breathless with strenuous exercise, which is of course normal. And the most severe grade is grade five when uh, the participant is too breathlessness, too breathless to leave the house or gets breathless when dressing. So I'm now going to hand over to Julia. She's going to tell us about the study question and the approach that was used to answer it. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Thanks Adrian. So in this study, we wanted to look at the risk factors of persistent breathlessness after COVID-19. And to do this, we use data from a study called FAST, which looks at uh, outcomes in people who've been hospitalized with COVID-19. So a baseline, the participants were hospitalized and we had 990 participants who were breathless at five months after discharge. And we basically looked to see who among them uh, showed improvement at 12 months after discharge and who had either persistent or worse breathlessness. And we can see here that uh, two thirds had persistent or worse breathlessness. And we wanted to find out what were the determinants for this. We had, uh, as I said, 990 people who had all been previously hospitalized with COVID-19. They had an average age of around 60 years. Um, they were quite evenly split among the sexes, uh, slightly more men. They had majority white, uh, but with some ethnic diversity and quite high prevalences of heart disease and lung disease. And the risk factors that we identified for persistent breathlessness after hospitalization with COVID-19 were older age, so 2% less likely to improve for every extra year of age. We found that women were 35% less likely to improve than men. And people who were overweight were 45% less likely to improve. And this percentage increased as their weight increased. A longer hospitalization was also a risk factor. So for every extra day that they were in hospital, they were 1% less likely to show improvement. And heart disease. So 25% less likely to improve if they had underlying heart disease when they were hospitalized. And then we wanted to get a grip on how specific these risk factors are for breathlessness after COVID-19 compared with breathlessness in the general population. And to do this, we used confidence data um, and we picked out controls who basically had never reported COVID-19 or any symptoms compatible with COVID-19 or had ever reported having long COVID. Uh, we use exactly the same design, so we had took their breathlessness at baseline and at five months after baseline. And then we looked at those who showed some level of breathlessness and looked to see whether they showed improvement or persistent breathlessness at 12 months. As our controls, as mentioned, were people who'd never had COVID-19. They had a similar age to the FOSP participants, around 60 years. We had more female participants than, than men and we had uh, far more white participants than those of ethnic minorities. These are just features of our data set. We had a far lower prevalence of heart disease than FOSP, just 7%, and we still had quite high prevalence of lung disease. And the risk factors for persistent breathlessness among these controls with no COVID-19, um, we found no association with older age, but we did find a similar association with female sex. 
Uh, we also found an association with people who were overweight. So again, 38% less likely to improve if overweight with this percentage increasing as weight increased. We found a similar association with heart disease, so 45%, so 43% less likely to improve compared with those who didn't have underlying heart disease at baseline. And so the bottom line is, is that older age, female sex, uh, being overweight, having a longer hospital stay and having underlying heart disease when hospitalized with COVID-19 are risk factors for persistent breathlessness up to 12 months after discharge. And when comparing these factors with controls, we found that many of them are also associated with persistent breathlessness in people who have not had COVID-19. Over to you, Adrian. Thanks very much, Julia. That was uh, very clear. So um, if you could just move on to the next slide, I just want to uh, highlight some of the next questions that we want to ask. Um, first of all, um, you will have seen that this uh, group of participants uh, from covid excluded those who had COVID-19. So the first thing we want to do is look at the people within covid who had COVID-19 and compare the risk factors for breathlessness for those who had less severe COVID-19 that didn't require hospitalisation compared with those who had to be hospitalised. I think we're also interested to know how specific this effect is to the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, that causes COVID-19. Is it something specific to the virus or is it something about having a uh, uh, a pneumonia that's bad enough to require hospitalisation that's not specific to having COVID-19. So we have uh, a large or well, a significant number of uh, covid participants who've been hospitalised with pneumonia that wasn't due to COVID and we can use that data to compare the impact of COVID pneumonia versus non-COVID pneumonia on long-term breathlessness. A second question that we want to be addressing is also uh, relates to what, what the mechanisms for these associations are. Why is it, for example, that heart disease is a predictor of persistent breathlessness, specifically in people who've had COVID-19? A third issue relates to the potential effects of vaccination on outcomes. I'd highlight that uh, the majority of the people who are hospitalised with COVID-19 from the FOSP cohort um, were uh, affected before the rollout of vaccination, so during 2020. Um, we've now, particularly within COVID, it's acquired a large amount of data on people who've been vaccinated, and I suspect that vaccination is going to be a major modulator of these outcomes, but we need to test that formally. And finally, because ultimately the aim of our project is to try and identify intervention, uh, we want to drill into the data, see what treatments people have been taking, um, and then run further analyses to see whether these are associated with improved outcomes in terms of uh, people being less breathlessness, being less breathless uh, at, at 12 months of follow up. So that brings uh, this month's webinar to an end. Uh, I'd just like to finish by thanking all of you whose, whose monthly data uh, were essential to running this analysis. Also, people who contributed to the FOSP COVID cohort, um, to Julia, who uh, played a large part in the analysis, along with Bang Zhen, uh, another statistician previously based at University of Edinburgh, and uh, Aziz Sheikh at Edinburgh as well. Uh, and so that's all from us. I look forward to seeing you next month. Goodbye. <laughs>